Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're fully prepared or even if you're aware of the power of the man that's about to step on this stage. He has now an incredible feature film under his belt, but he is a star of stage, radio, print, media, vinyl. He has toured the world and he's ended up in some of the remote places that you'd never imagine any man or performer could go. It's been a long three years we've been waiting for this man to come back to these shores. So I want you, as a kind, suppressed, controlled and restricted Sydney audience, to let loose for the one and only America's number one funny man, Neil Hamburger! damn music. <laughs> All right, let's get this party cooking. that killed the lead singer of Blind Melon. <laughs> Why? Why? Why did Johnny Depp... We need another cable. This is, this is, it's not working. Why did Johnny Depp's wife divorce him? Why? Why? Well, because Amber heard his music. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Layla. Layla, Eric Clapton records down there on the ground so the dog can shit on them. Why? There we go. Shit. <laughs> All right, just give me another microphone. I'm sorry. Why? <laughs> it is not the boys. It's, 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 we need another microphone. This is a disaster. <laughs> Here, uh, this nice microphone, but... Uh, uh, why did Eric... Why? Why did Eric... Why did Eric Clapton... Legendary... Legendary... Legendary Clapton, legendary guitarist, 26 time Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, 
guitarist Clapton, legendary guitarist Eric Clapton. Why did Eric Clapton switch from PC to Mac? <clears throat> well, because he'd had a horrible experience with Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Al Molinaro's doctors give him so many painkillers on his deathbed? Well, because they wanted to see him die in a happy days. <laughs> Uh, Al Molinaro, of course, uh, <laughs> uh, was uh, one of the uh, lead cast on, uh, on the Happy Days TV program. From the tell them, tell them who he was. And he passed away recently, and so this is sort of our tribute to uh, uh, Al Molinaro. Why? Why? Why did the compassionate nurse smother her patient to death with a pillow? Why? Well, because she found out he was in dire straits. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst thing, the worst thing about being sexually assaulted by a member of Foghat? Well, it's probably not even an original member. <laughs> yeah, boy. But moving right along, we have some. Oh, oh. Why are we hearing this goddamned music? Is this what would happen if, if Lamp Biscuit was playing? <laughs> Listen to salsa music during this show. <clears throat> what was it? What was it that the Grateful Dead were so grateful for? <laughs> well, that all these buxom teenage Hippie chicks would have sex with them, even though they were clearly mentally retarded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> who? 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 Who are you? I'm not going to do that. Then who? Who are the ghoulish, the ghastly, the horrific, the archaic horror characters depicted on the back cover of every single Iron Maiden album? <laughs> the guys in the band. <laughs> Why? Why did Ozzy Osbourne disgraced Black Sabbath vocalist Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> Why did Ozzy Osbourne bite the head off of a chicken? Why? Why? Well, because his wife is a horrible cook. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Osborne, of course, Ozzy's uh, uh, wife, Mrs. Osborne, decided one uh, afternoon to make a, a healthy dinner for her family, for Ozzy and the rest. And so she went down to the local meat market. 
the Bel Air Meat Market, which if you are familiar with Beverly Hills, you know this is the best meat market for 50 miles. She went down and asked for the best cut of chicken that they could possibly sell. Well, as luck would have it, they just got in a shipment that day of these organically raised uh, free-range chickens from Bellingham, Washington. <laughs> Top of the line. Now these chickens are shipped frozen from Bellingham, Washington. That's about 1,500 miles away. This particular chicken farm uh, ships these chickens to their uh, retailers whole, intact. They pluck the feathers out of the chicken and that's all they do. They don't cut the, the, uh, the neck or the feet off of the chicken before freezing. Mrs. Osborne brought this frozen chicken home. She opened the recently issued by Random House Books, the Osborne Family Cookbook. Who has the cookbook here? You know this cookbook. She decided to make a Grandma Osborne's famous fried chicken. But Mrs. Osborne overbreaded the chicken. She overbreaded it. There's no disputing that. Using the recipe in the cookbook, which I can reveal to you guys here, is cornflakes, egg white, quarter cup of water, pinch of salt, pinch of white pepper, pinch of MSG, and wheat flour. Mrs. Osborne overbreaded this chicken. Then she dropped it into the deep fryer, where it cooked for 45 minutes. Well, due to her incompetence at breading, when she took this chicken out of the fryer and put it on Ozzy's silver platter, his favorite platter, which incidentally was a gift to him from Epic Records, 1982, uh, for selling two million copies of Bark at the Moon. <coughs> she brought this overbreaded chicken into the dining room where Ozzy was waiting. Well, Due to the overbreading, it didn't look like a chicken at all. It looked like a gelatinous blob. It looked like a loaf of bread. So then when Ozzy took out his silver matching knife and cut what he believed to be the breast of the chicken, well, it wasn't the breast at all, folks. In fact, it was the overbreaded neck and head of the chicken. And so innocent Ozzy, innocent Ozzy, took a bite of this chicken, inadvertently biting the head off of the chicken. Ladies and gentlemen, to this day, Ozzy Osbourne has no idea what happened. <laughs> and it wouldn't matter if he did know, because his brain was scrambled years ago from drug abuse. <laughs> and his music reflects that. <laughs> Well, we have some other jokes. Uh, <coughs> but times change. Times change, yeah. They really do. Wow. Can you believe 20 years, 20 years have gone by since 1997. <laughs> times change. Back in 1997, Anyone here born in 1997? What a year that was, wow. Back in 1997, what would you call five fingers that were grasping a small boy's penis? <laughs> the Jackson Five! <laughs> but times change. It's 2017, folks, now. 2017, wow. Yeah, yeah! And in 2017, what are we referring to when we speak of the Jackson 5? What? The number of dollars left in Jermaine's bank account. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Why?
what? What is the worst thing, the worst thing about Fred Durst's herpes? What? His music. <laughs> and what, my friends, what is the only thing uglier than Limp Biscuit fans? Limp Biscuit merch with some of the bad font choices that they make. Papyrus. And then you get the bad four color registration on the 50 50 cotton poly blend so that after a couple of washes, the, uh, it starts looking like their faces are cracking on the band portraits. You get these cracks. And so it looks like the skin is bad on these guys, and it is bad. But it looks even worse this way, and of course the skin color, the, the, you know, it's not, uh, it's not realistic, and then due to the bad printing, the pupils aren't centered properly, so it makes them you know, look really sickly and bad. All right, enough on that. We, we gotta get some jokes in here. <laughs> what disease? What disease, my friends? What disease did Ben and Jerry, legendary, legendary ice cream makers Ben and Jerry, what disease did they give to all the prostitutes in their hometown of Waterbury, Vermont? Diabetes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> How do you stop Carlos Santana from molesting your children? You put a guitar in his hands. <laughs> How is Beetle George? Beetle George Harrison. Yeah. Poor Beetle George. Wow. What a loss, Beetle George. How was Beetle George Harrison able to correctly diagnose arthritis in a middle-aged fan who approached him for an autograph at London's Gatwick Airport? Well, there was something in the way she moved. <laughs> to celebrate his 70th birthday. Yeah. What was Beetle Paul, Sir Paul, Sir Paul McCartney, Beetle Paul? What was Beetle Paul's gift to himself on his 70th birthday? He threw all his Ringo Starr CDs into the trash. <laughs> Why did Beetle Paul leap out of his chair? What did he exclaim as he leapt out of his chair in Manchester, England? This took place in February 2001. Beetle Paul was sitting at a card table on a stage at the Manchester Evening News Arena. 25,000 people in attendance. Beetle Paul McCartney was the celebrity judge at an event that raised quite a bit of money for a certain charity that we cannot name here tonight. Beetle Paul was the sole celebrity judge, and when he had seen enough of the contestants, he leapt out of his chair and exclaimed something. Does anyone know what Beetle Paul said that day? Folks, this was a public urination contest. <laughs> There were 150 contestants, ranging in age from 8 to 98. There were bowls, beautiful Chinese porcelain bowls. You have to see these bowls. They're very, very elegant. They were laid out on the edge of the stage. This is a very big stage. These bowls were numbered 1 to 150. These contestants would come out onto the stage and stand or squat 
<laughs> over the bowls and urinate into the bowl as Beatle Paul McCartney took notes. They raised over four million pounds for charity this night. Beatle Paul had watched most of the contestants urinate. And then they got to contestant 141. And Beetle Paul knew he had seen enough. He knew that he had a winner. And he leapt out of his chair. And he exclaimed something. Does anyone know what he said? As he watched contestant 141 urinate into this bowl. He leapt out of his chair and yelled out, Peed best! <laughs> Yeah, Pete uh, Best, of course, was the original Beatle drummer. So this was very funny. This was very, this was very, very funny. It was very, very funny. But it was, you know, it was funny. It was funny when when he did it. Uh, that's why you don't do other people's material. So you drop that one tomorrow night. Right. And to be here. Okay. Well. <coughs> What do you call, what do you call a senior citizen who can't refrain from exposing their genitalia in public? Madonna. <laughs> and why? Why did Madonna feed her infant baby Albo brand dog food? Well, she had no choice. That's just what came out of her breasts. <laughs> 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 But we do have some other gags. <laughs> what do you call the greatest slime that is often found in the bathtubs at the Ramada Inn? The Little River Band. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You got the one guy here who appreciates what we're trying to do. Make sure you sit there seething, huh? stewing in your own sour juices, you people make me sick. The problem is within yourself, not you know, with the entertainment I'll offer you tonight. But we do have some jokes. <clears throat> Why? <clears throat> Why did Gene Simmons? Yeah. Gary, guitarist, Gene Simmons, KISS guitarist, incidentally. Why did Gene Simmons add a sombrero to his on-stage costume? Why? Complete desperation. <laughs> In all his years of performing, what is the strangest, most outrageous, most ridiculous, most utterly bizarre thing that a fan has ever come up and said to Mr. Gene Simmons? You're a very good songwriter. <laughs> Hey, did you guys hear? I don't think this news would have made it all the way down here, and thank God that you have such a big ocean dividing you uh, from the rest of the world so that you don't hear stories like this. Did anybody happen to hear what Gene Simmons, the legendary uh, uh, Kiss guitarist, uh, did last year on Christmas Eve? Did anyone catch this story? Nobody. Wow. Good for you. Human interest story about the legend Simmons. Christmas Eve 2016, the holiest of holidays. It was around 10.30 p.m. and Mr. Simmons summoned his limousine driver and asked to be taken to Hollywood's legendary Sunset Strip. He arrived at about 11.15 on Christmas Eve and Mr. Simmons got out of his limousine 
and walked behind a hardware store on the Sunset Strip, a hardware store with a dumpster under which were sleeping two homeless street winos. <laughs> and then Gene Simmons, legendary Simmons, reached into his pocket, pulled out his wallet, and handed each of the street winos seven hundred dollars in cash. Woo! Merry you, Christmas, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Folks, it's not that impressive. The two street winos were Ace Freely and Peter Chris. <laughs> These were their annual royalty payments. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Friends, <laughs> Friends, why did Gene Simmons, pea brained, <laughs> incompetent, ugly, stupid, garbage musician, garbage person, ugly, so ugly, bad songwriter? No one here can name any other songs. Because there aren't any songs that were hits, because they're not good. It's bad songwriting. Poor you know, lyrics and the music. It's all very, very poorly done. <laughs> and he's so ugly. He's so ugly that the whole makeup that these weirdos would wear was because he was so ugly that he needed makeup, so he made the rest of them wear makeup too, so that no one noticed that he was covering his repulsive, repugnant face with makeup. The other guys were quite handsome. And good musicians. But why? Why did disgusting, and he smells so bad. If you've ever met him at one of these book signings for one of his horrible books about the stock market, investment banking from Gene Simmons. Huh? Or his dumb kids. <laughs> this horrible man. Why? Oh, why did Gene? Gene, I smell like an open sewer Simmons. <laughs> why did Gene Simmons have original? Original kiss drummer Peter Chris's anus. Sewn shut <laughs> to prevent him from producing any unauthorized kiss merchandise. <laughs> what did Gene Simmons, repugnant Simmons, whisper, whisper <clears throat> into the box? Groupies here, while they were making love, that caused her to jump out of his bed at the Sheraton Hotel and run down to the lobby to find a phone to dial 911 for help. What did he whisper? Hey, let's listen to one of my solo albums. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call, what do you call the twisted old piece of plastic that Gene Simmons uses to pick up Marilyn Manson shit in his backyard at one of these shock rock get-togethers? Alice Scooper. <laughs> Got some of the Kiss Army back there booing. <laughs> the legitimate children of Eric Carr. <laughs> the 
come to the show and they harass me. That's okay. They're just protecting their dead father's memory. And I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you that. Oh, God. Really, huh? Really. <clears throat> what do you call it? How many? Why? 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 Why did the sexual deviant love hummus so much? Well, because the chick pees. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five exit signs there. <laughs> Mr. Boo, huh? Mr. Boo, huh? You got your money's worth already on the other end. Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> on your way out the door, there's, the, there's a good exit over there. We walk by here, so kick your stupid face in, huh? <laughs> on your way out the door. That'll get more laughs than some of these Gene Simmons uh, jokes. <laughs> What? What is the worst thing? The worst thing about buying used toilets on Craigslist. <laughs> Having to go over to Rob Schneider's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did disgraced rapper Tupac Shakur have in common with blockbuster motion picture Oceans 13. Well, sadly, both of them were shot in Vegas. <laughs> All right. Or ever flush his toilet. Hey, there might be something in there he could incorporate into a song. <laughs> and why? Why don't the Eagles? Yeah. The Eagles. Why don't the Eagles masturbate together anymore? <laughs> well, because the public is more into electronic dance music. <laughs> what do you call a non-working knob? that is often found on the podiums that are found on stage uh, at electronic dance music festivals. Oh, boy, boy. DJ Diplo. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Justin. Justin. You're just in time. You're just in time, Mr. Ambulance Driver. Because DJ Diplo, one of the brightest lights on the electronic dance music circuit, DJ Diplo has overdosed on cocaine and will die unless he gets immediate medical attention. <laughs> knock, knock. Dwayne. Dwayne is Wong's, please, Mr. Ambulance Driver. <laughs> Dwayne DJ Diplo's Wong's of the fluid from the cocaine overdose. I'm not a doctor, clearly I'm a wallet, clearly I'm Bugs Bunny. But I realize if we don't Dwayne DJ Diplo's Wong's of the cocaine fluid, he will die and then we will never have music again. <laughs> knock, knock. Urine. Urine. 
You're in trouble, DJ Diplo. I'm Detective John Jones from the Parramatta Police Department. We have found illegal drugs in your pocket. These are very dangerous pills, Mr. Kiplo. You will be going to jail for a very, very long time, and deservedly so. All right. Just trying to be topical. I'll go back to Doobie Brothers jokes, huh? Is that what this crowd is into? DJ Diplo's coming to town. Hey, who's got your tickets? Anybody got your tickets already to see this guy? Huh? Anybody want to go see that? Huh? <coughs> you can go into one of these internet cafes and watch the old winos checking their email for free. You can pay to watch this cocksucker. Blocked, blocked me on Twitter of cowardice because I mentioned that some of his uh, some of his music was a uh, lesser quality than uh, than some other music that's been made over the years. <laughs> got a real man. Okay, we got some gags. We got some gags. Oh, why? Why were the guests, the guests, at Paris Hilton's house party? <laughs> so reluctant to drink the apple-based beverage that she was serving. Well, because they heard that there was semen inside her. <laughs> they heard that there was semen inside her. It's inside her. It's that, 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 that there was semen inside Miss Paris Hilton. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, why don't rapists eat at TGI Fridays. Why? Well, it's hard to go out and rape when you have a stomach ache. <laughs> what is the very first thing that you should remove from a hungry jacks that has caught fire? The fire extinguisher. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> On his deathbed, as he lay dying, why did Colonel Sanders reveal the secret of his 11 herbs and spices to Academy Award-nominated actress Sally Field? Well, because he was desperate for a hand job. <laughs> Folks, we got some merchandise. I don't know where the merchandise booth is, but we will be there. I'll personally be there uh, uh, signing each and every one of the two items that sells. Uh, we've got photograph recordings, if you're interested in that whole scene. They're not replaced or re-recordable. You can't, it's not like the CDRs where you could re-record uh, your own songs over these. This is, a, it's printed into the plastic. You can't do anything about it if you don't like the record. You're stuck with the record. So we do uh, warn people that because we've had some complaints. <laughs> we have those records for sale. We also have DDVs, which is uh, a very current type of uh, medium. They used to have the old movie theaters, and now they do this instead. I had a motion picture come out recently. We're selling these on the DDVs. We may have some other items for sale. I have no idea what they might be and whether or not they represent a good value. But do stop by and say hello and give me your card. You know, if, you know, if you're in some sort of business, that we might be able to do business. So we got a couple other gags. <coughs> Why did Mick Fleetwood, disgusting Fleetwood Mac drummer, founder, Mick Fleetwood, why did Mr. Mick Fleetwood insist, absolutely insist, that in the green room, before every Fleetwood Mac show, why did he insist that Christine McVie, the keyboardist vocalist for Fleetwood Mac, why did Mick insist that Christine McVie had to shave his scrotum 
before he walked out onto the stage? Why? Well, because Stevie Nicks. <laughs> and he was, he was, so this was his preference. Anyway. Why did the Doobie Brothers manager insist that on the side of the stage, at every single Doobie Brothers concert, on the side of the stage, there has to be a small table on which is placed one trash bag. Well, in case one of them dies during the show. <laughs> That's not so hard, okay. What do you call the creatures? The creatures who were found growing in the pile of old potato chip wrappers and discarded G-strings behind Britney Spears' house. For children. <laughs> Why did Britney Spears toss a dozen buffalo chicken wings into the toilet bowl? Well, because she mistook it for her own open mouth. <laughs> what is Britney Spears' favorite thing to put on her pizza? Her elbows. G rated, that, that one's that's family friendly. Whose music have in common with the Somalian refugees? <laughs> it's poor. <laughs> All right, so this is a fun crowd. <clears throat> Folks, this is a nice venue. I've played here many, many times before. I don't know, I, I didn't ask the, uh, some of the great staff here, didn't ask them this, they probably would have known, uh, whether or not the John Stamos variety show that has been touring around the world, did that uh, come to Sydney, did that play here? This is the perfect uh, size venue and stage for, did the John Stamos, anybody see the John Stamos variety show? Anybody see this thing? Did it come to Australia? Does anyone know? Does anyone know if uh, Mr. Stamos brought his variety show to Australia? Nobody knows. I guess he didn't then. Nobody here has seen it? Nobody that was traveling perhaps in America or Canada or the UK saw the Stamos variety show in New Zealand? I know he did it there. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about this show. Because I happened to catch it a couple weeks ago in Santa Barbara, California. Currently in its second year of touring. And it is a sensational show. I'm not in the habit of recommending other shows during the course of the evening. That's not what we're paid to do. But I feel this is a very special show and that uh, you should keep your eyes out for it in the event that it does come to the Manning Bar or another venue uh, in Sydney. John Stamos has put together an hour-long variety show that you've got to see to believe. It's just that good. <laughs> The show starts out. There's curtains blocking the stage. You have no idea what's behind those curtains. The curtains open up and onto the stage hops, not John Stamos, but a little kangaroo from the Adelaide Zoo. Mr. Stamos is touring with a little three-year-old kangaroo. Hops out onto the stage. They play some comical music over the PAs. The little fella does some figure eights. It's really something. And then he reaches into his pouch, which has been pre-packed. <laughs> with all of John Stamos's feces over the last week. <laughs> and then this little kangaroo thrusts these old Stamos feces into the full faces of everyone in the front row. That's how the show starts. <laughs> But it gets better. Because that's just act one. In act two, Stamos himself takes the stage. Yeah. 
and walks out to the very edge of the stage where that green tape is, the very edge. And he stands so his toes are hanging over the edge of the stage. And he turns around. And he unzips his pants. And Mr. Stamos drops his drawers around his ankles. He bends over. And he whistles Little Deuce Coop out of his own anus. <laughs> You gotta see this show, folks. You gotta see this show. Other things happen, leading to the finale. And the finale is is a thing I really want to let you know about, because in the finale, John Stamos leads a donkey, a mule, a mule from the St. Louis, Missouri Zoo, leads this mule out onto the stage, and then Mr. Stamos proceeds to masturbate this mule to completion <laughs> while standing alongside him the original former lead singer of Frankie Goes to Hollywood <laughs> performing an acoustic version of Relax on a 12-string classical guitar. You gotta see this show, folks. <clears throat> this show has got everything. This show has got it all. But what? What is the one thing, the one and only thing, you will not see at the John Stamos Variety Show? What? A full house. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ben. Me, you know, Hammer. Well, that, that, that went bad, right? That was bad. Oh, I guess we could do one more. I mean, we, we could do some more. Oh, yeah. So good to see you all again. <sighs> all right. At what point, at what point, during a Julio Iglesias concert, at what point do most people throw up? <laughs> when he comes on stage. <laughs> Liza Minnelli put her empty vodka bottles into the recycling bin. Why? Well, she's passed out, face down on the floor. It's not a priority. <laughs> what is the only thing worse? The only thing worse than 9-11. 3-11. everybody from here tonight, huh? Locals? All locals? Anyone travel? Anyone live more than uh, 20 footsteps from this uh, nightclub? Where are you from, weirdo? Yeah. yeah. Weirdo, yes, you. What town is that? Enmore, well, that's, that's, yeah, they, that's, no, that's a real town. He's not kidding around. <laughs> That's a real one, yeah, no, I've heard it, yeah, it's very, they have very good uh, food there. And, uh, and yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really something. Wow. That's close, you don't even need an umbrella to get home tonight, huh? And more, huh? That's really just Sydney, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have your own uh, fire brigade, or is it, uh, is it just a, a Sydney? There's no end more. Fire truck, is there? The new town? So those fire trucks actually do have the new town 
on the outside. Okay. Good fire, guys. You had a fire? Yeah. You better cut that hair or you're going to have a fire, I'll tell you. If you don't wash your hair and then you have long hair and then it, it goes up in flames. I've seen it so many times. But you call those guys, they'll take care of you. Well, so the Enmore Newtown Fire Department. Well, I actually do have a joke about that. Hmm. Funny. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do that joke. We don't usually do it, but. Uh, Why did the uh, Newtown Fire Department fill one of the uh, water tanks on one of their fire trucks with human shit and piss and spray them all over a fire? Well, because it was the arcade fire. Oh. Uh, now we're doing another job. Which illegal substance? Illegal substance had to go on? Yeah, that guy over there. Which illegal substance is most frequently slipped backstage? To Chi Chan Chong by audience members who have just seen their current show. Cyanide. <laughs> Hey, thanks to our wonderful young acts. We had the song and dance team and then the magic people and uh, that's always a lot of fun. We will be selling merchandise over in the dark corner there so that you can't see that a lot of the merchandise is uh, actually defective. We have a couple other gags here. Ugh, what? What did John Bonham, original Led Zeppelin drummer, this guy looks a lot like him. What did original Led Zeppelin, deceased Led Zeppelin uh, drummer John Bonham give to all the other members of Led Zeppelin on Christmas Day? What? Presents. <laughs> hey, presents, of course, one of the biggest, uh, biggest selling albums. <laughs> what, did, uh, what did Jimmy Page say? When Robert Plant, the dynamic uh, Zeppelin vocalist, approached him and said, uh, Jimmy, we need to change the lyrics to our biggest hit to reflect my newfound interest in therapeutic urine drinking. I have found this to be a cure-all uh, for uh, cancer, for leukemia, for the gout. This is the cure that the world needs, and I'd like for the world to know that by drinking your own urine, uh, you are on the road to better health. Can we please change the lyrics to our biggest hit uh, to reflect my new interest in this? What did Jimmy Page say to Robert Plant when he was approached with this proposition? He said, absolutely not. The song remains the same. There's no reason to... Okay. Ugh. But seriously, gang. What did Jimmy Page, guitarist Page, holler at John Paul Jones, a Led Zeppelin bass player, yeah, uh, uh, on the golf course in Palm Springs? What? Four! Yes. Oh. All right, we'll leave on a positive note. Hey, thanks everybody for coming out. What a great, great night. We'll never forget your faces. <laughs> Why? <clears throat> Why did two teenage boys crawl down into the portable holding tank of an outdoor chemical toilet and wait there for over 15 hours. Why? Well, because they wanted to meet Aerosmith. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ben Pete. Good night.
It's all right. We gotta do it, we gotta do it. Jesus Christ, huh? Here that Anthony Kiedis, <laughs> Red Hot Chili Pepper vocalist Kiedis, finally joined the Mile High Club? Yeah, yeah, he raped a woman in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did the Red Hot Chili Peppers go under the bridge? Well, there was a plate of shit there they wanted to jack off into. <laughs> and what do you get when you cross the red hot chili peppers with an octopus? Chunkies with eight arms to shoot up into. <laughs> the name of the British dignitary that the diseased heroin addict Anthony Kiedis insisted on meeting with on his one day off on a recent UK tour that the Red Hot Chili Peppers did. They did 29 shows in 30 days. He had one day off and he uh, made a couple of phone calls. He wanted to meet this British dignitary. I don't think that the ties between Australia and Britain are uh, now what they used to be, but surely somebody here knows the name of this British dignitary. Very, very important over there. Not so important over here, but maybe you've heard about him. Does anyone know the name of this British dignitary that Mr. Kiedis wanted to meet with on his day off? Oh, it was Sir Inge. <laughs> When he is not on tour making hellish music with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, when he is at home, sitting in his dirty, stinking G-string watching his own awful videos, what is Mr. Anthony Kiedis' hobby? What is his passion? What is his passion? Needlepoint. In the category of alternative rock. Do they have trivia nights at the Manning Bar? Is that, yeah, they do. Anybody here ever go to those? Those are fun, I think. Huh? Answering some of those trivia questions, huh? Seinfeld and some of those things. <laughs> In the category of alternative rock, which... Which... Uh, who... Uh, who... Who currently holds in the category of alternative rock, who currently holds the most Grammy Award statuettes? Does anyone know? There's no prize. <laughs> alternative rock. Hmm. Grammy Award statuettes. Who holds the most? <laughs> the pawn shop across the street from Anthony Kiedis' heroin dealer! <laughs> <laughs> how how do you get a three-legged dog? Sad soul. Poor unfortunate dog. Wow. But you gotta help those dogs if you do see them. And you will. How do you get a three-legged dog to piss on the red hot chili peppers? You play them their music! <laughs> if Anthony Kiedis is your house guest, and I sincerely hope that he never is, <laughs> if Anthony Kiedis is your house guest and he won't come out of the bathroom, what do you do to get him out? You call the coroner. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Neil Ryan. I'm going to see at the merch booth. Jesus Christ.